a sort of photographic antithesis of Bobby Moore's post-shirt swap embrace with Pele in 1970, it is one of the iconic World Cup images. Four years after the photograph was taken, it was further seared on the collective football consciousness when the author and journalist Simon Cooper used it to illustrate the cover of his award-winning bestseller Football Against the Enemy. Cooper would later regret doing so and apologize to one of the players featured in the photograph on the grounds that it was probably unfair to highlight such an unseemly act when it had been perpetrated by somebody for whom such behavior was so utterly out of character. The snap in question, Rudy Voller standing in thoughtful meditation with his hands on his hips in the immediate aftermath of one of the most unjust dismissals in World Cup history, while over his right shoulder. His Dutch rival Frank Rijkaard looks to be inspecting the massive rally he had just violently expectorated and left dangling from the back of the German striker's bubble perm like a Christmas tree bobble. If I spit they will take my spit and frame it as great art, Pablo Picasso once said. Rijkaard's flop into Voller's head may have been a masterpiece of a fairly unpleasant genre but was never heralded as great art. It did, however, contrive to make global headlines, earning the defender the nickname, Llama, in honor of the South American Camelid's prodigious ability for hurling projectiles manufactured from saliva. It was an uncharacteristically vile act performed by a man almost universally held in the highest of regard and one for which he later apologized. Baller accepted Reichardt's mea culpa and the incident was later put to bed when the pair agreed to break bread and spread butter together for a TV commercial, with both their fees going to charity. The Llama earns his nickname. Photograph DPA Picture Alliance, Alamy The rivalry between Holland and West Germany, as they were then known, was and remains notoriously fierce. Its roots are in the Second World War and the mutual loathing of both teams and sets of fans intensified after the mother of all defeats, when the Germans famously triumphed over the Dutch in the 1974 World Cup final. At the 1980 European Championships, the German goalkeeper Tony Schumacher was assaulted by the Dutchman Hoop Stevens in another German victory, while the Dutch exacted some measure of revenge eight years later, when Marco Van Basten sent Holland through to the final at Germany's expense on a night when his teammate Ronald Koeman enraged German sensibilities by pretending to wipe his backside with Olaf Lund's shirt. The following year they were further incited during a qualifier for Italian 90 in Rotterdam, when Dutch fans unfurled a giant banner comparing the German captain, Lothar Matthäus, to Adolf Hitler. One did not need to be a rune reader to predict their meeting in the second round of Italian 90 was likely to be spicy. Like most matches between West Germany and the Netherlands it was a bad-tempered affair. Having topped Group D ahead of Yugoslavia in Colombia in second and third place, Baller and his teammates, who would go on to win the match and the tournament, had earned a berth in a decidedly tricky second round eliminator against the world foes in Milan San Siero. The format of Italian 90 meant the top two teams in each of the six groups progressed to the second round, where they were joined by the four best third place teams from the group stages. With Rude Gullet and Mick McCarthy having agreed, with 20 minutes or so to go, to play out a draw in their final group game at Palermo Stadio La Favorita, to shaft Egypt and ensure they both went through, the Dutch and Jack Charlton's Republic of Ireland finished with identical records behind England in Group F. It was the Dutch who drew the short straw that pitted them against Germany, while the Republic of Ireland advanced to play against and beat Romania. Rudy Voller points out Frank Reichard's unwelcome addition to his perm. Photograph Color Sport Rex, I'm just finding it in a way a little bit disappointing that Frank Reichard, who is also such a talented player, seems today to have such a negative role, just looking after, Jurgen Klinsmann, said the ITV commentator Brian Moore, as the clock ticked towards the 20-minute mark. A moment later the subject of Moore's disappointment, looked after. 
Klinsmann strike partner Voller, putting a stop to the fleet of foot strikers Gallop with a scything challenge on the inside left channel, halfway inside the Dutch half. The challenge earned Rijkaard a booking from the Argentinian referee, Juan Carlos Lostau. It was his second of the tournament and meant he would miss the quarterfinal should Holland progress. Maddened by his entirely deserved punishment, Rijkaard was enveloped in red mist and, as he jogged past Voller to take up his position for Andy Bremer's free kick, he spat in the German's carefully coiffured mullet. Verbals between the pair ensued, at which point Lostow booked Voller, ignoring the German's incredulity and accompanying invitation to examine the goblet of spittle that had recently been deposited in his hair. Frank Reichardt encourages Rudy Voller to get up after an angry confrontation in the box. Photograph Bob Thomas, Getty Images with order of a sort restored in the Germans ambling into the penalty area for the as-yet-untaken free kick Fowler appeared to explain to his strike partner Klinsmann that he had been spat at, then took up his position. Floated into the area by Brema, the ball was knotted towards the edge of the six-yard box where the goalkeeper Hans van Brooklyn grabbed it, having dashed off his line to do so. Having followed in to contest the ball, Fowler appeared to do all he could to avoid clattering Van Brooklyn in mid-air but an incensed Reichardt attempted to drag Fowler to his feet by the ear, then stamped on his foot, prompting the German to fall to the ground. With Van Brooklyn and Klinsmann valiantly attempting to act as peacemakers, Lostow promptly brandished his red card in the direction of Reichardt, before turning and showing it to Fowler too. The hard done by German could scarcely have looked more appalled and to this day remains mystified by the official's decision to issue him with his marching orders. The referee dismisses Rudy Voller. Photograph Bongarts, Getty Images, of course it wasn't nice what Frank Reichard did but the match should have continued for me, he said years later in an interview with 442 magazine. I still can't understand why the ref sent me off and I guess he will take it to his grave. He wanted to make an example of both of us so that the situation would calm down, which did work. There was some venom before between other players but, you know, it's always problematic between Germany and Holland, with Baller standing there stoically pondering the injustice of it all. Reichard was lurking in the background, studiously clearing his mucous membranes by hiking up the mother of all growlies. As he walked past Baller en route to the dressing room, he casually turned his head and flobbed the mouthful of slimy gloop he had just harvested from his nasal turbinate straight into his rival's hair. Fowler's head snapped to the right as he glared at his opponent, then rubbed his hand through his curls in an attempt to locate the offending phlegm, which could be seen dangling from the back of his head. As Reichardt was being escorted up the touchline towards the dressing rooms by a Dutch team official, Fowler broke into a jog, looking for all the world as if he might attack his saliva-spewing assailant and prompt all hell to break loose. Rather disappointingly he chose to be the bigger man and merely cantered past his rival without so much as a sideways look. Spitting is universally recognized as perhaps the ultimate degradation and it's bound to result in rather aggressive retaliation, mused the consultant psychologist Dr. Eric Sigman years later, in some nostalgia-based clip show or other. Dr. Sigmund may well be right but rather intriguingly Voller proved the exception to the rule by refusing to retaliate in any way, aggressively or otherwise, bearing his multiple punishments and degradations at the hands of both referee and opponent with a stoicism that bordered on the truly heroic. The post-phlegm moment as Rudy Voller and Frank Reichardt head towards the dressing room. Photograph Bob Thomas, Getty Images, and now, an absolute sensation here in Milan, declared more on a TV, as both footballers left the arena. One that will do little for the game, I have to say on the night. Both sides reduced to 10 men. Baller running off to the dressing room, Reichardt taking a more leisurely pace. 
As they went past, there was even a possibility Reichard may have spat at Waller, but the place is in uproar now. On Irish television the incident was replayed time and again, mainly for yucks and giggles. As Root Ridding Master Bill O'Hurley he tut-tutted in a fatherly and faux po faced fashion, Undy Eamon Dunphy got to work with his new toy, an electronic pen with which he could enhance and illustrate his analysis by drawing white lines, circles, arrows and squiggles on a monitor after pausing the VT with an often aggressive roar of stop it there, at some unseen flunky in the production suite. It was a technological advance Dunphy would use to comical effect some years later, pausing the action during a highlights package featuring Wimbledon to draw a large circle around John Hartson's ample buttocks and declare, that is not the ass of a 7 million pounds player. On the night Germany beat the Dutch, his analysis of the incident was peerless and priceless. Reichard launches the spit from here, now stop it there, he observed before getting to work with his magic pen and charting the trajectory of the offending gully with an illustrative squiggle. There it is, Bill. It's hitting his head there and that's bad news for Rudy Voller and even worse news for his hairdresser. Meanwhile on the BBC, a completely farcical turn of events was being treated with the utmost gravity. His parents, turn the videos off now because that is just absolutely scandalous, intoned Ray Wilkins solemnly, considerately thinking of the children but paying scant regard to the ratings. Writing about the spitting incident in his book tour, The Story of German Football, the German journalist Uli Hess Lichtenberger pointed out that Reichard and Waller were not exactly strangers. Reichard knew Waller from Italy and both men respected each other, he wrote. Five months later, when Milan played Roma, Reichardt apologized and said he'd lost his head, explaining he'd been under emotional pressure, having separated from his wife shortly before the World Cup. In a subsequent interview with Simon Cooper, Reichardt was quick to accept all the blame for the incident and equally quick to put paid to suggestions that Waller might have insulted or even racially abused him. That day I was wrong, he said. There was no insult. I always had much respect for Rudy Waller but I went berserk when I saw that red card. I talked to him after the match and I apologize. I'm very happy that he accepted. I have no bad feeling about him now. We even posed for a very funny advert together years after. Sign up for the Fiverr, our free daily football email. The advert in question was for butter and featured both men sporting wide grins, cream dressing gowns and their trademark but mercifully saliva-free curly hairstyles while seated at the breakfast table. A Dutch butter company came up with the idea of a public reconciliation under the slogan, everything in butter again, which is a German proverb meaning that everything is okay again, said Baller. The fee was donated by both of us to charity, otherwise I wouldn't have joined in. In a rather undignified but amusing manner dignity had finally been restored.